So let's talk about it. So what you just heard me play was Mike Lewis's opening line in Midland, Texas Picnic area. Oh, that's a tongue twister. It's off of Chris Morrissey's album North Hero and today I transcribed it and I decided I would talk about it in a video. This will hopefully become a weekly or bi-weekly transcription series where I basically take one line and break it down and give you some exercises to practice based on this line. So if you're from the future and watching this and I actually did that, please leave like a thumbs up emoji or actually do this one emoji, like that thing. Yeah. But anyway, let's dive right into the solo. I'm going to give you a little analysis and then I'm going to give five exercises that I basically deviated from some of the analysis that I did on this. If you're interested in a PDF of this, I actually opened a Patreon page. It's only $5 a month and you get all the PDFs of all the transcriptions and analysis, things that I do, including the exercises. So check that out if you're interested. It's in the description. But anyway, let's dive right in. I'm going to play the line slowly for you. So there's a lot of interesting things happening, so let's take a look at them. So first of all, this is sort of in the key of B-flat. The ending piano line was the... Uh, which is basically like an approach tone to the third of B-flat, which is D, and then down to B-flat. So we're kind of in this B-flat tonality, and that's where the solo section starts, at least. What's interesting is that Mike Lewis played a G minor 7 arpeggio. We got a 6th note arpeggio. We're starting on G, F, D, B flat, and then G, and then D again. So we have root, flat 7, we got the 5th, we got the minor 3rd, we got the root again, and then the 5th again. And then the next line is flat 7 back to 1. So it's kind of interesting hearing that G minor arpeggio over this B flat major. And we're actually only one note away from playing a G minor pentatonic. Which is kind of interesting because over a B flat major kind of progression. The G minor pentatonic works. So that's one exercise you can try. I didn't include that in my list of five exercises, but if you're unfamiliar with that, one thing you can do is pick a few keys and then find the minor pentatonic and improvise using that minor pentatonic skill. Anyway, the next line, we actually have a D minor add four arpeggio or a D minor arpeggio with the fourth, which happens to be G. And then Mike does something interesting. So he plays the major third of D, which is F sharp, and then later resolves it to a G. So we have this sort of like approach tone thing that he does, but he delays the resolution. I talk a little bit about the emphasis of this in my video on half step resolution, where I basically go and show you how much tension is generated by holding on to that note. So we have the same kind of thing here. But it's even more tension because it's a half step away from the note we want to hear, and it's outside of the key or outside of the chord. We have a major third over a minor chord, which is a big no-no in the like jazz theory world. But here he makes it work because he uses it as an approach tone. And then resolves it slightly after. And what's interesting is that we have really this line, which is an enclosure. But what's really interesting is that one, the first note, G, comes from this F sharp, and you have that delayed. And then you have this line, and then he delays the resolution again to A. But if we just like kind of put the line together, we have. We actually have this really cool enclosure that goes from three below, two below, then one above, one below, and then right on the note. So we have this line if we eliminate all the spaces. So it shows you kind of the power of rhythm and spaces and pauses and rest. You know, there's a lot that changes because instead of getting that line, which is kind of the obvious thing, we have this now. Which is really interesting. And then we have... And it sounds really interesting and it's a lot different than you'd expect. It's not that typical of a thing to do. And you probably wouldn't see a line like that in like a jazz theory textbook or like a jazz licks textbook. But anyway, we have another enclosure and this time it's going to B flat and it starts one below and then it goes two above. Which is really cool because that is kind of tailing on the previous idea of. Which is really cool because now we have this constant stream of enclosures. We started with this one, which was connected to the previous line. And then we have that one. So this was the resolution of the previous enclosure that's leading up to the next enclosure. 
or the next target note of the enclosure, I should say. And then in the middle of the bar, this is on the end of three, he starts a new line. So we have a three note approach to E flat. We have C, C sharp, D, and then we have E flat right there. So his ideas are like kind of just coming at you nonstop. It's really cool. And then we have an appro another approach now. We have C sharp to D. And then we have another B flat enclosure, but this one is two below, two above, and then one leading tone, which is one below. Also really interesting. It's a very long line from this short enclosure idea. And then we have, which is kind of cool. We have the fifth, which is F, the flat six, which is G flat. And then we have the root, which is B flat. And then the next line, which he kind of sneaks in there is, which is also a pretty interesting idea in this like B flat area that we're in. He also kind of slurs the, the first two notes of that. Anyway, so that's my little analysis of that. Now let's get into the exercises. So this first exercise is taking the delayed enclosure idea and taking it up a B flat major triad. So essentially what I'm going to do is play the two enclosure notes and then the target note with a rest in between them. So the first one is going to go B, A, and then rest, and then B flat. So in time, one, two, three, four. And then the next two enclosure notes are E flat and C sharp, which lead up to D. So I'm going to play this next line. And then so on. So then if we do the whole line like that, we go up the whole B flat major triad, B flat, D, and F, and then I'm going to go up all the way because the guitar has a lot of range. If your instrument doesn't have that much range, just pick somewhere in the between. You can start reading from about halfway. But anyway, we now have this line. Which is kind of a really quirky line. It kind of is like, bodigo, bodigo, bodigo if you kind of just take off the first two and start from the B flat. That's like a rhythmic inversion of the line. But anyway, as you can see, we get a lot of mileage out of this. The second exercise is kind of the same thing, but instead of looping it like I did the first one, I left a little rest in between to differentiate the phrase. And then with here, you get a nice five bar phrase, or it ends on the fifth bar. So you have this kind of asymmetrical thing that sounds really cool. And you got that line. This is also a really good one to practice syncopation, and what's really interesting is in the enclosures start on the downbeat first, and then it starts on the offbeat, and then it starts on the downbeat again, and then offbeat, and so on. So you're practicing a lot of rhythmic variety within this exercise. Then my third exercise, I took the first opening line. And I only took this part because I feel like it's a different line altogether. Although you could include that in this pattern, but basically I took that idea, eight, seven, five, three, one, and I took it up to B flat major scale. So first we have B flat major seven, and then we have C minor seven. I'm gonna play that again because that wasn't clear. And then we have D minor seven, E flat major seven, then F seven. G minor seven, this is our note, or this is our like main thing, the first thing we have, and then we have A half diminished, and then B flat major. So this is what it sounds like all together. This is what it sounds like faster. little like 5-4 line that's really cool and really it's like 5-8 superimposed against 5-4. Then my fourth exercise is the enclosure thing. We got two down, two up, and then an approach tone. It's like the one we had earlier and I'm doing this on every note of the B-flat major scale. So essentially we're gonna go and we're gonna do that for every note of the B-flat major scale. And if you're a guitar player I would recommend not using the same fingering every time because I could easily do something like this. And 
although it's a little easy, we want to kind of challenge ourselves. So check out the way I'm playing it. I'm basically kind of sticking in one position, so one area of the fretboard. So sometimes I have stuff like where I'm playing like the half steps on two adjacent strings rather than, even though this might be easier in context, the first one is easier if you can think of it. But anyway, let's start this. I'm gonna do the first one on B flat. And then we're gonna go to C. Then we're going to go to F, then we're going to go to G, then we're going to A, and then to B flat. So this is how the whole thing would sound now. You can do a bunch of variations on that one as well. Then finally, my fifth and final exercise is doing the minor add four triads, and we're gonna do the approach tone to the fourth, but I'm gonna do the minor triads in minor thirds. The minor thirds idea was just my idea. You can take this in any interval in any cycle, but if you take minor triads in minor thirds, you have this D minor, F minor, then A flat or G sharp minor, then B, and then D minor again. And we're gonna add the fourth. And then we're going to add the approach tone to the fourth, which is the major third. And then we're going to leave a space and then resolve back to the fourth. So it's going to sound like this. It's also in 5-4, so I can fit the whole phrase in one bar. Again, we get some really interesting combinations of rhythms. So this one goes like this. And there you have it. So as you can see from this one eight bar phrase that I transcribed, there's a lot of mileage you can get out of it. A big part of why I decided to do this series is because I always try to get as much mileage out of one thing as possible. And with that one, you work on like melodic development. So getting an idea and developing it and like using the information over and over rather than playing a bunch of your different licks. But also it gives a sort of story slash continuity to the listener if you're repeating a lot of the same ideas, as long as you're just developing them and making them interesting. And from one piece of musical content, we can get a lot of stuff done. And if you're looking to transcribe things on your own, but you're not exactly sure where to start, I recently did a video on the one thing that holiday music is good for, and I'll give you a hint, it's ear training, so I talk about how to use that for beginning ear training students. But anyway, if you want the PDF, check out my Patreon. If you want to just support me anyway, check out my Patreon. But yeah. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed, do all the things. But anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.